Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. Last time we came across something a bit surprising. But enough about finding a rank one rune in a late game area. We also stumbled across the body of Godwin and discovered that he's dead, but not quite as dead as we've been led to believe up to this point. And there will be plenty of time to dwell on that, because there's still a very important leg of Thea's quest left to complete, but we don't yet have the means to do so. So, back to Round Table Hold for now. Once I was finished up with my dear friend the glowing stag from the thumbnail, I never went back for the Remembrance items. So we'll check those out now. Distinctive horns suffused with the power of ancestral spirits. This large wing-shaped specimen is wielded as a weapon of spirit worship. In the ancestral spirit worshiping faith, these are considered envoys' wings, made to reap the lives of beings which experience no sprouting. Item cut from the horns, the regal spirit, a number of new growths bud from the antler-like horns of the fallen king, each glowing with light. Thus does new life grow from death, and from death one obtains power. Kind of an alternative to the Erdtree system, the system of Erdtree burial. Now I'm going to go grab a couple of smithing stones, upgrade that, and maybe see if I have anything left over for a couple of other weapons that I've been eager to show off. And then I will meet you all back at the Three Sisters in Lyernia, because we have unfinished business with Saluvis, unfortunately. Now, Saluvis is still under the impression that we gave the potion to Nefeli, and that it just didn't take. So soon. Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it. We also bought a puppet from him. What's that? You want another puppet? Quite the keen paramour, aren't we? But I'm afraid each and every one is like a child to me. I can hardly just give them away. Oh dear. What's to be done? Why don't you fetch me some starlight shards? If you can manage it, I'll gladly prepare a new puppet for you. The soul of every puppet has its own ambience. You'll soon come to know, once you possess a few. And once each's predilections are known to you, the better you'll be able to love them. Oh my god, I hate him. You have much to look forward to further down this road. God, he's like that creep from... Dragon Ball GT who turns Pan into a doll. You're proving to be quite the puppeteer. I've not had an apprentice for a very long time indeed. Begging it's because nobody likes you. Uh, there remains much to be done. I hate him. Perhaps you'd be interested in a little scheme of mine. It will produce the finest of puppets, which I aspire to cherish with these very hands. A ploy to fool even Lady Rani. How does that sound? Ah, I knew I had you pegged. You're just like me. Then I'd like you to procure something. A rather unique starlight shard that glistens with amber. With that, my special draft will gleam with nectar sweetness, and even a demigod would be slave to its charms. Procure it for me, the rather unique starlight shard that with that, my special- And even a demigod would be slave to it. Right, we got the map to that, the Amber Starlight. From, I want to say it was Pedia, which marks the location in the Altus Plateau. Uh, naturally, once we are actually firmly in the Altus Plateau, a thousand new things will open up for us to see and do. But we're going to focus on this for just a little bit. And at this point... We have a choice to make.
And that choice is whether or not to betray Ronnie. And that very much is a hard split. And I just don't know what I'm going to do. It's such a hard choice. Siding with Saluvis or Ronnie. I'll have to take some time and think about that. Uh, luckily, we do have a little bit of traveling to do, and we have a couple of different map fragments to pick off, uh, to pick up, both off of this branching path here. This fork in the road. First, we're going to follow the fork off to the left. Just off to the left, we have a little Erd Tree sapling. So that means more golden seeds, more charges for the flask. Anything in here of real interest? Mm. Oh, omens. I'm going to not disturb them too much, but I will take a perfume bottle. That will be incredibly handy for all the blood boil aromatics I definitely craft. <laughs> Alright, and our first map fragment of two in the Altus Plateau. And let's see, if we keep following this path, it should lead to, yeah, the Great Bridge, which we don't quite want to be there yet. Just going to double back, go back to where the path forked off, and grab the other map fragment. And then that also puts us pretty close to where we're going, which is, again, the Amber Starlight. Oh, hey! I'm glad I came back for that. I don't know if we have a Noble Slender Sword yet. I'm, I'm very unsure of whether or not I actually want to hunt down rare drops as part of the 100%, because it's not part of the Platinum, but... Mm, how much do I want to fudge 100%? Oh, there are, there are some bad rare drops in here. I spent on a different file, uh, something like four hours? Grinding in, a, in an endgame area for one very specific weapon. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff like that. Armor sets, too. I think a lot of the armor sets are more obnoxious because you're looking for four different drops at a time. And some of them are pretty obnoxious, like the, if you want to, if you want that really cool looking clean rot set, the gold and red Valkyrie armor, you have to farm the, the knights in the swamp in Aeonia. And it takes forever. An ephemeral sliver that gives off a pale amber glow, what remains of a passing flash of starlight. If the stars command our fate, then amber-hued stars must command the fate of the gods. Such is the belief that inspired the one the use of these shards to prepare a most special draft. Cannot be consumed by mere humans. Yeah. Before we take that back to Saluvis and make a very big decision, uh, there is another map fragment that I want to remember to pick up. And it is, I think, just up the big flight of stairs here. It also leads to a really convenient site of grace. Oh, yeah. I forgot the bridge is fortified. Or the stairway is fortified. Ooh. Got clipped. <laughs> Listen to him call for reinforcements that won't get here in time. 
I'm already gone. Oh, these guys are a little spooky, though. They can do things. Like, shoot lightning at me. Looks like they're behaving, though. They're behaving. And then up at the very top of the stairs, we got some friends waiting for us. Anything? No. That is not one, but two tree sentinels. They drop what used to be the most fun shield in the game, the Erd Tree Great Shield. So remember the Tree Sentinel we fought all the way back in episode one? It had the ability to absorb projectiles and fire them back as golden DBZ key blasts? That's the Erd Tree Great Shield's weapon art. Except it had a couple of quirks. Like, how it could trigger off of more than just spell projectiles hitting you. Uh, if you were to, say, poison yourself, every single take of poison could activate that. Or you could wander up to the northern part of Altus Plateau and grab a spell called Fire's Deadly Sin, which does almost nothing. Uh, it makes you do a very small amount of, of damage over time to things that are right near you. Like, microscopic amounts of damage. And you also take small, rapid ticks of damage, just like with poison. And that would also let you chain fire the missiles from the shield. It was the machine gun shield. It was one of my favorite from soft builds, and they killed my boy dead. Now, was it working as it was supposed to? Probably not. Did it affect PvP? Probably. I don't care. Disable it in PvP. We now have, like, PV PvP-specific things now. Like, PvP-specific tuning. So, you know what? Let it, let it ride. Let it come back. Let the legend come back to life. The remains much to be done. Make it quick. Well, well. You managed to lay your hands on it. The blessed day is finally upon us. Goodness gracious, the way it glistens. Utterly enchanting. To think this was once a demigod's very fate. My, oh my, oh my. Ah. Are you still here? Oh, yes, I, I should give you your reward. Yeah, please. It's all yours. It's splendid work. It's just marvelous. Now, just you wait. The merriment is soon to begin. The scheme I promised is to be revealed very shortly. Talisman carried by assassins who strike unseen. Patterned on a scorpion freshly shed of its exoskeleton, its claws seizing a heart that shimmers with magic. Raises magic attack power, lowers damage negation. Let's just start stacking talismans that lower my defense. Why not? Uh, we're going to quit out really quick, just because it's faster than warping back to Ronnie's Rise and riding all the way back. Draft gleaming nectar sweet. Give it to Rani and ensure she drinks it. The dead eyed doll lets down her guard in your presence rather remarkably. Though she might dip her hands in the dirt and feign that icy persona, she's a frail, gentle girl at heart. You. 
understand, don't you? That once you have Rani drink my draft, my scheme will come to fruition. And we... Well... We'll be in a position to claim the very finest puppet ever crafted. Just imagine the pure elation. You are beautiful on the inside. You are innocence personified. And I will drag you down and sell you out. Run away, I am cold like December snow, I have carved out this soul made of stone, and I will drag you down and sell you out. Embraced by the darkness, I'm losing the light, encircled by demons, I fight. What have I become now that I've betrayed everyone I've ever loved and pushed them all away? And I have been a slave to the Judas in my mind. Is there something left for me to save in the wreckage of my life? My life. I become, I become, I'm becoming. I'm become, I'm become, I'm becoming. Judas in, Judas in my mind. Wow. This is a most unpleasant awakening. The depths of wickedness never fail to surprise me. I am saddened that thou wouldst succumb to such depravity. Led astray by Celevis with devious tonic in hand, didst thou think to have thy way with me? Be gone, hapless scum. I won't have another whiff of thy rotten breath. I have spoken away from my sight. This is the third time, fiend. Enough of thy unbearable breath. That is what happens the third time you try to talk to her after trying to betray her. So the operation was successful. We sided with Saluvis and Ronnie hates us. Great. Thankfully, we have Celestial Dew. So I'm going to go take a bath and wash off the stink of treachery. And then Ronnie will be totally fine with us. It will be like it never happened. <laughs> and then we're going to have some words with Saluvis. I would never have done that if I had not thought that Ronnie was capable enough to discern treachery. I was merely testing her, her instincts. Oh, Saluvis! Come and answer for your crimes, Saluvis! Hallelujah, Saluvis is dead. And from his body... Oh, we could still buy puppets, though, in case we didn't get all of them. From his body... Whoops, wrong one. From his... Mm, from his body. Saluvis bell bearing. And finally, we get the cool hat. We have liberated the cool drip from the scumbag. <laughs> Large hat with the movements of the stars drawn on the inside of the brim. Worn by the magic preceptors who served the Carrion Royals. Increases mind to the detriment of stamina. Glintstone sorceries are the descendants of astrologers. A fact that the Carrions remain aware of. Even their fate has been long severed from the stars. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed the if in there. Even if their fate 
has long since been severed from the stars. Now, there's also the matter of Pedia down here. Congratulations, puppets. You've unionized. Congratulations, players. You've unionized. You have broken my game. And we get the Dolores puppet to boot. And his bell bearing, which means that if you had unfinished business with Pitya as a merchant, there won't be any problems. Spirit of Finger Maiden who never met the tarnish she was meant to guide. I'm oh, I'm pretty sure we have read this. Because I think I theorized that Theralina is the, uh, the dead Finger Maiden from the beginning of the game. One of Saluvis' favorite puppets. Spirit of a handsome archer who dressed in the style of a man called a silent hunter by some. She fires St. Trina's arrows from her short bow. Dolores once belonged to the Round Table Hold, where she was both a critic and friend of Gideon the All-Knowing. It was because of her that he and Saluvis went their separate ways. Just thinking about Gideon calling Saluvis a puppet botherer. Now, we do have other business with Ronnie, aside from pretending to betray her. Because when we were in Nakron, we got the Finger Slayer Blade. it seemeth. Even in my slumber I sensed it. It is in thy possession, is it not? The hidden treasure of Nokron. My thanks. Finally all the pieces are in place. Soon must I begin my journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. Ah, but before I leave, I shall entrust thee with this. My thanks for thy sterling efforts. A strange gift, perhaps. But a rare sort such as thee would welcome it, I'm sure. I am certain now. Fate steered us to our reunion. You may leave now. It was but brief. But thou gavest me fine service. What is it? You may go. I, too, am to depart on a journey, upon the dark path. What is it? I... So this is where Ronnie and I part ways, for the time being. No, nothing special there. Now, where is it? Oh, also the Deep Root Depths map. Let's see. Very depths of the Earth Trees, majestic roots, lies the source of the Einzel and Sofer rivers. Here, too, begins the network of great tree roots that spread throughout the lands between. Where is that statue we got? Oh, there we go. Statuette of a scholar with ground and sky inverted reveals the hidden form of the Carrion Study Hall, which connects to the Divine Tower. To unveil the secret, 
affix it to the pedestal of the celestial globe. That'll be useful when we actually go to the Divine Tower. But I do have something else in mind for the time being. We'll get to that pretty soon. I just want to get back to Altus Plateau for now. And another huge ramp and another huge set of stairs. And in instead of being assailed by two tree sentinels this time, it's another gargoyle. But it's not another pair of gargoyles. And I am not interested in what he's selling. We want to get up to the very top, to the battlefield. For yet more golden seeds. It's like the fifth seed now that I picked up in Altus Plateau, just right there in the beginning of it, too. There we are. Oh, right. Just so I don't slow roll. Now this serves to tell us two things. Margit is in fact very much alive in that he can apparently astral project. And same fight as before, except just starts out with the phase two move set now. But what is Margit doing back, especially here near the capital? Who knows? It's a mystery. Oh, there was no second one? Okay. Usually he makes me work for it a little bit harder. Margit is not the only interesting omen hanging out around here. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. We're heading towards the urge the minor urge tree on the map that looks a little bit faded compared to all the others. is just up this hill by all these enormous graves. Same kind of grave that uh, I saw and commented on in Castle Morn. There it is. It's dying. It's withered. There are barely any golden leaves on it. And it's surrounded by death blight and skeletons. Specifically, those who live in death. Now, we didn't come all this way for the winged crystal tear, although it's a nice bonus. I'm gonna have to go all the way back unless there's a spirit spring, which would be convenient, but apparently it would be too convenient. By the way, very happy with getting the crystal tear out of the way. And, hell, oh. Well, it's not a one. I can always take solace in that. This unhealthy, sickly Erd tree has got a unique omen in front of it, along with unique uh, servants. 
this one is dressed a little bit differently uh, in Thea's garb, and it uses Thea's mist. And also, you saw the symbol pop up when it cast it. The death blight, the, uh, the half wheel wound of the centipede mark. And likewise, these all have. These are all dressed like Thea with the deathbed uh, uh, veils. Only ones like this in the game, as far as I'm aware. These ones have Thea's Mist, too. But why? Well, let's grab these first, and then... Let's check something on the map. This faded, dying Erd tree just happens to be almost directly above Godwin's body. And now, since we're so close by... We went from two tree sentinels earlier to normal ones. I'm gonna skirt around these archers. The trees are mostly gonna do the work for us of taking care of the arrows. And we dealt with two regular tree sentinels earlier. Now we come across one. But it is not a normal tree sentinel. This is a draconic tree sentinel. And it guards the entrance to the dungeon to the capital city of Lanedell. So if we want to get in, we have to go through him. And now that he's buffed up, we can get right down to business did not take long to get him into phase two. Where all of his attacks will now have a huge lightning explosion and he gets a couple of unique new attacks. There we go. You have to dodge that really late in order to not get clipped by the AoE. Ooh, there's a second. Ow. Ow. He hits like a tank. Oh, come on. I want him to do... There it is. Nope. I want him to do the other one at least once. That one you also have to dodge pretty late. You have some very tight windows to actually safely get through a, a bunch of these attacks. Like that, you want to wait as long as you possibly can. And we can't afford to just tank that hit to finish it like this. Gotta admit, that went off without a hitch. Much smoother than I was expecting. Sometimes that boss can be a little bit problematic because of how hard he hits. And because of how, like the timing that you saw being pretty tight. Weapon said to have been whittled from the claw of a great ancient dragon wielded by grotesque tree sentinels who yet serve the Erd Tree. The claw is enwreathed with lightning and tears through the dragon's feeble descendants with ease. It's our new age dragon tooth. And then also we got the shield as well. Great shield said to have been whittled from the claw of a great ancient dragon. Same thing. Okay. So now, if we wanted to, we could get started on Lanedell. And before we do... I have a couple of shout-outs to my $10 and up patrons for the month of May. So, thank you to Albrightenful, Absinthe Miasma, Benjamin Carlson, Brenton Buchanan, Cracky, Cleric BC, Caitlin, Evan, Victor T, 
Glenn Mullen, Cinderlin Ockerblom, Kyle, Moody, Not a Tick with Wi Fi, Spectre Haven, Wolfman 500, and Wi Fi. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.